Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody, and cast time once again. And, um, to start with, this is gonna... I'm doing this very early because I've got a feeling that this is gonna be a long one. Um, I didn't do one yesterday, so I'm basically covering two days in, uh, one video. I'll, I'll probably talk more on this later. Um, but, for the, let me intro the music real quick. Um, those that have checked out my other... My other cast videos, this one here is going to be all too familiar to you guys. Um, it's definitely one of my faves. Um, and I, and there was a, there was actually a whole bunch of other albums that popped up in my YouTube recommendations. Um, listen to all of them. Um, the short answer on them, they all sucked. It was just, it was all just white bread dungeon synth. Kind of a, kind of a strange thing to say. White bread dungeon synth. Anyway, but anyway, and there was um, I think there was some um, uh, there was actually actually I just remembered there was actually one folk tune, one folk album in there. It was from Germany, but um, I kept, I I kept it, it kept. It, pfft, let me see if I can say this right. I kept thinking that this must be, this must be that if Hitler was a folk hero, type music. I mean, it's just, you know, acoustic guitar on the back on this clean like in bar, like in dust, you know, and kind of, you know, kind of like that. You just, yeah, I, on one end, uh, on one end, it was pretty funny, but on the other hand, too, a little bit on the creepy side. So, yeah, definitely, definitely not cast worthy. I mean, just the fact that there is singing on it. I mean, I don't. I, I avoid uh I avoid music that has singing. I like um uh, I like instrumental music for these cast videos. I mean so, so this one it is, but like I said, um all the other albums that that showed up that I tried out, they weren't they didn't work, so this one it is. Never fails. Some are some are in the process of putting this cast video together. They um, the computer jacks up the headphones or jacks up the volume in my headphones up to the max. Now, um, I do have major wire headphone wire issues. If it gets to be a problem to where I'm constantly yanking a wire trying to get trying to get a sound in both of my ears, I'm just gonna go ahead and take them off. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It's cutting in and out. So, not to be a douchebag or anything, but I'm just going to go ahead and take the headphones off. Um, I have the OBS mixer right in front of me, so I can I can still I can still monitor how quiet or loud it is. If it gets if it gets too far into one extreme for a long time, I'll go ahead and adjust it. Because I need to be able to focus on talking. But anyway, let's get her started. Um, but yeah, yesterday, um, I was on zero energy. It it's been going on since uh Friday and Saturday. Just no no get up and go after work. So I. I know it was, um, I don't know about Thursday, but I know uh, Friday and Saturday, there was no stream. So like I said, and I got to look at something. I think, uh, yep, YouTube froze up. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So anyway, um, but yeah, and then yesterday, um, yesterday it was so bad that I didn't even, I couldn't even do a cast video yesterday. Now, most of the time when I'm, most of the time when I'm feeling like crap, I can still at least, you know, get one of those off, but, no, but not this time. 
Um, I did what I normally do in a situation where I would just, um, I just normally I'd have a nature walk or a nature hike in the background and then just simply talk. But, uh, this time, um, I tried doing the same thing. I got about maybe about five minutes or so in and it, I just, uh, I got, I think I'm probably, uh, I got through part of a sentence and I just said, fuck it. And just bailed out of it and just, just, just went ahead and, um, do kind of a, kind of a makeup video on today. So, like I said, um, it's what, like I said, so, so part of what, part of what I did yesterday, which was very, very little, is just going to be rolled over in today. So, um, but yeah, um, but today, like yesterday, um, I just played mostly idle games, um, uh, and then, uh, today, also like yesterday, I started with, um, idling to rule the gods. Um, those that have seen my other streams, they're, you're probably familiar with this one. Um, yeah, I usually, uh, I usually play this one first. Uh, play that for about an hour or so. And then, um, after that, I fired up a, a fairly new idol game. Um, uh, I think I came up on my, uh, my Steam recommendation page or whatever, or I just, uh, I go on the, uh, the Steam store, the store page, um, I click, um, uh, click the idle tag, and then, um, this new one came up, like, Farmer Against Potatoes Idle or something like that, it's, it's basically, Attack on the Killer Tomatoes, except with potatoes. So, just... Just have that, just have that on. Kind of like it. It's kind of cool. Um, animate the um, the graphics and animation looks very cheap, or it looks very uh, cheaply done. But it's also an idle game too, so you can't can't expect too much out of it. Plus, uh, it the the graphics is uh, the graphics is a lot cooler than some of the other idle games I've played. You know, you know considering what it does. Let me uh, let me go on it real quick. Okay, I gotta check my equipment. My um, my backpack is full, so you guys probably won't. You probably you guys probably can't see this very well, but so clean that. Let me uh, spend my talent points. And here's one thing I definitely like about this game. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but yeah, the uh, this the skill web. It's based on the one in uh, Path of Exile. It was a uh, it was a game that I played for about nine months. It's pretty cool. You know, there's uh, six different classes that you can play on this. So yeah, but uh, otherwise, um, oh, I gotta rewind back to yesterday. Um, one thing I did try doing, just so it wasn't a total waste of a day, um, I tried playing a game called Mirror's Edge. It's it's a it's a it's like a, a parkour platformer. I think that's what it's classified as. It's freaking cool as hell to watch. Um, so but um, again, I actually tried playing it, but. I only lasted maybe about a few minutes because uh, it's like an old, it's like an old uh, mid to late 2000s game where apparently uh, windowed mode didn't doesn't exist, or at least it doesn't on this game. Whereas uh, all the games that I play, I have to be able to play them in windowed mode. I can't do them in full screen because I'm the kind of person that likes to switch between windows a lot, and every time I do that. There's always this chance that uh, my computer's gonna crash and transition, you know, just because of the uh, the big 
the big resolution change. So, so yeah, like I said, uh, didn't last long on Mirror's Edge. I thought about, um, I thought about trying out the uh, Catalyst. That's the, uh, that's Mirror's Edge 2. Um, I thought of trying that one out, but, uh, I, I think at that time I just had, I had so little energy that I just wasn't feeling up for it. And plus, I think, um, I, I probably should have taken a look at what year it came out. But, uh, I was also guessing that, um, that, um, that Catalyst probably, uh, probably wouldn't have had a windowed mode either, which, again... I have to have, it has to be windowed, not full screen. So, but I might, um, if I get around to it, I might check it out later. But uh, that, that, that's something else, too. I mean, yeah, if you don't, if you don't like a game, if you only played it for a short time, and if you got it off Steam, yeah, you can, um, you can get a, you can uninstall and get a refund on that game. But even then... I'm still kind of skittish on doing that in case, uh, in case I get, re my refund gets refused for whatever reason. I mean, especially with me being, you know, working part-time and, like, I'm, um, I'm basically cash negative, cash flow negative, or whatever you want to call it, so, I can't, so I can't afford to be writing off any more money, so. And then something else I did a fair amount during my stream, um, I've been having a major problem with assassin bugs. Um, I've had it for at least a week. It was especially bad today, though, because that's where I—that's where I spent a good chunk of my stream, just having to having to go and go and grab the bug spray and trying to get the uh, trying to get these big bugs off my screen door, because uh, there's they're starting to come inside. Um, I'd say probably I think last Wednesday, I literally had one of these big old boys inside my apartment. Just flying around and stuff. I had to chase it around with like bug spray and a fly swatter. So, I mean, it probably sounds like a first world problem, but it is what it is. So yeah, I again, I've been getting the, today. I've been getting these all over my screen door. So, again, some of them are. I've got a. I've got this big huge gap. Um, between my screen door and the uh, my sliding glass door, there's like this gap. I think that's where they're um. When they would uh, when they would when they would fly, they would either a hit the opposite side of the screen and then just kind of crawl along the screen. They just crawl right onto my side of that of that uh, of the screen, or they just probably fly straight to the crack and crawl in the crack and then there they are. So so yeah, like so yeah, I've been doing that doing that constantly. Just, you know, kill one. And another one seemingly takes its place after after a short time later. And then later on, uh, during the stream, trying to figure out what kind of bugs these are, eventually uh, I found a, what I'm, the problem I'm having. I think they're called uh, like leaf bladed bugs or something like that. Oh God, I, I forgot the actual technical name of them. But um, but I'm according to what I'm re according to what I've read, I'm not supposed to be having a problem with these guys. They um, uh, they they basically um, uh, they feed they uh, they feed on seeds and stuff, on tree seeds. I don't. I think they can feed on the leaves of a tree, but I don't think that's their that's their first choice. Um, so they're, so like I said, they're, they're not even supposed to be coming into my apartment. And then later on, but later on, um, I think I figured out why it's just a theory, but I took a look around, I took a look around the front of my apartment and, um, I, it, I just remember that sometime during the during this highway project that they have going right by where I live, one of the things in their agenda was to improve the view in the local neighborhood or something like that, which consisted of I don't I don't want to say pruning the trees, cause or maybe extreme pruning, like 
kind of like they're they basically chopped off their legs at the knees if that makes any sense at all like they didn't just you know clip like the the, the real low hanging branches they basically just they hacked off all the branches on like the lower lower parts of the tree they also some of the tree branches that were like extending into some of these apartment balconies they chopped those off too so you got a whole lot of trees around my area now the the bottom half the bottom halves of like the bottom branches they're all gone like they came and pruned the shit out of them so i'm guessing what happened is when they did this they basically destroyed the habitats of these kind of bugs that used to live down there at the bottom their habitats now got moved upward and i live up and i live on the third floor so now now that their habitats have been moved upward they're right they're right along right along my uh my patio door so now they're starting to think they're starting to land on my uh, screen door and stuff like that and crawling inside etc and this is also happening in october when the weather is getting cool so i might have to double i might have to double check um what i'm reading about them but um i think they uh i i don't i'll just go ahead and assume that they're also trying to find a warm place to stay for the winter but again they don't they're not this is probably the first time in the 12 years that i've lived in my apartment that i've, I've encountered this i'm guessing um i'm guessing this is mainly a problem of the people who live the people who live below the people who live below me they're the ones that, are, that have the problems so But yeah, this is this is really bugging me right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check my idle game real quick. Um, farmer against potatoes. In case I didn't say so earlier, um, just gotta do some. Yeah, my backpack is full, so gotta scrap them. Since I'm one-shotting all these potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and uh, advance an area. Okay, so it looks like he's one-shotting these guys, too. But otherwise, that's it on that. And then, um, hang on, I forgot what I was going to say. Ah, oh, well, screw it. And then, um, for pinball, I did very little. I went on FX3. Oh, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. And then, um, I only, um, on FX3. I just played, uh, I did one attempt on Wolverine. That's it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty low on the rankings right now, and we still got two days to go until the, uh, until the end of the week. So, I, oh, and, uh, my one attempt was a failure. So, I don't want to keep attempting over and over and dropping further and further down on the rankings and eventually into the red. So, I'm probably going to go ahead and not make any more attempts at all because again all these attempts are failures so i'm gonna i'm just gonna leave it as it is now if it's like the last minute and if i am in the red then yeah i'll probably have to i'll have to scramble try to at least win at least one one table somewhere to try to get out of the red but unless if, if that doesn't happen then again i'm just gonna leap I'm going to leave the uh, weekly matchup alone. So, I don't want to dig a bigger hole for myself. Now, later on, um, maybe tomorrow morning or something, I might do a pinball arcade run. I don't know. We'll just... I'll just cross that bridge when I come to it. So. 
Um, and then um, I do I do need to sketch a little bit of a backstory on this. Um, I'd say about uh, I think it was probably about 12, 13 years ago when I first got uh, when I first got transferred to my new store to my new Walmart store. Um, there were a couple of a couple of my coworkers. It was probably the first time in my life that I that I met people that were into the stuff that I was into, you know, you know, geek stuff, nerd stuff, you know, video games, Dungeons and Dragons, even though I've never played a single tabletop game in my life. Um, you know, you know, basically, you know, hardcore gamers, again, um, you know, in the geek culture, that kind of stuff. Um, so, so yeah, monstrous culture shock. But, what, um, They've invited, but they've invited me over into their apartment a few times, like once or twice a month for, I'd say probably about a year. Then after a while, we just kind of drifted apart. I mean, even, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much a nerd myself, but these guys were balls deep into it, like, like they're too rich for my blood. So, but anyway, um, one of the things that they were showing me for these times that I was hanging out with them in their apartment like every week, or not every week, but uh, once every month, was uh, they were really into Felicia Day. Um, one show was called The Guild. They were showing me some episodes of it. I, okay, I guess. Um, probably the same opinion, or The Guild. Um, Dr. Villain's blog or something like, musical blog or something like that. I can't remember. Dr. Evil's musical blog or something like that. Um, Felicia Day was on it. Neil Patrick Harris, I think that's his name. Um, yeah. But yeah, they were, they were showing me these shows and I had the same opinion about them as I did on Lord of the Rings. I don't... I mean, they're not bad shows, but they just, with me, they go in one eye and out the other. So, yeah, I'm... You know, watch, you know, watching it with these guys and stuff, it just, you know, it, it's watchable, but it wouldn't be my first choice. So, anyway, um, like I said, trying to sketch a little backstory on this. So, I think sometime recently, and I think I did talk about this in one of my other cast videos, uh, Critical Role, like, um, when I, back when I, when I was, uh, streaming idle games consistently, sometimes I would have this on. Um, I think it was one of their newer episodes, uh, their third campaign, episode 38 or whatever, but they've been doing this for, like, years. So it just, it kind of gave, it kind of gave me a hankering to, I wonder what the hell their very, 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 very first episode was like. So, I, I basically went in Creepy Stalker, or, or, let me rephrase that. I went in what most people would consider creepy stalker mode. It, it, it's something that I, I, I don't know how long the option has been available, but it's something I often do to other channels too. Um, I'll sort all their videos, their oldest first. Like I, I started. I'll, I'll start from the very, 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 very beginning. And uh, you, you just it's really, it's really cool. I mean. It really puts yourself in the role of an archaeologist or anthropologist. I don't, I don't know which one or both of them, maybe. But so you, you get to see, you get to see how they were when they first started. Now, to be fair, sometimes I'll do this myself too. I'll, I'll, just, I'll check out my very first video that I ever uploaded, which was a, a Diablo three video. It was back when I was playing on a PlayStation four. But yeah, sometimes I'll go back and look at that, just walking down memory lane. But like, going back to the topic at hand, um, did the same, did the same thing with her. Um, yeah, I rewound back all the way to her very beginning, and it's a pretty mind blowing experience. I mean, I, no, I forgot to say it, but what I was trying to find was her. Um, was there was critical roles very first episode again just I keep going off topic but I'm sure you guys gone through gone through this a lot too 
you know, you watch a show, and it's, last time, on such and such program, but I wasn't around last time, I don't know what they did, you know, it just, you know, the, the particular show you want to watch has content that they're doing references, and they're talking about situations that you weren't around for, you know, it's like you have to watch that, you have to watch that show from the very beginning to figure out what the fuck's going on now. You know, so, I mean, Critical Role was the same thing. Third campaign in their 30th or 40th episode. I wasn't around back then. So, I thought what I'd go ahead and do is kind of cut this off root and branch, if that makes any sense at all. And I I went through their Geek and, went through the, um, Geek and Sundry uh, YouTube channel trying to find that very, very first episode to see what it was like. And holy shit was my mind blown. Now... Now, when I first, um, got a little ahead of myself. Now, when I first checked out Geek and Sundry, the early stuff, I mean, it just, the vlog, it was just her doing, doing random stuff. And I do need to say this, um, I was wanting to say this at the start, at the, at the start of this part of the video, but this is one girl that knows how to plug her sponsors. Other people, other content creators out there, Provided they're allowed to, they need to follow her example. She took, um, she just takes all of her sponsors and puts them on one video. Um, I think all of her vlog videos, uh, I think she started with a top five. Like top five, she would, she would mention the top five websites that she's been going on. And again, she's, I don't. I'll, 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 for, for the sake of, for all intents and purposes, that's the phrase I was looking for, for all intents and purposes, she's, she's plugging her sponsors, you know, again, she, or, she's giving a shout out to all these websites she checks out, I mean, to me, this is fucking brilliant right here, you know, more content creators need to do this, provided they're allowed to, you know, like, provided their sponsors, you know, if they just say, hey, man, we don't care how you plug us, just plug us. You know, do it like this. You know, do it like as an actual part of a video or something. Not not putting your plug, like, right smack dab in the middle of your video. I mean, kind of disrespectful. I'm going to take another drink. Hold on. But, yeah, once again, she would, um... She would start these vlog videos. Um, at first, it was a top five. Eventually, she shortened it down to a top three. Like, top three, top five slash three websites that she's been checking out that week. You know, and again, I... This is, again, this is freaking brilliant right here. Just take all these sponsors, all these people that are blogging your program, putting it all on one video. You know, and not just, and not just pasting them like right smack in the middle. And plus, um, and now that I think about it, she's also doing it. She's also plugging them in the right way. I don't, I don't think she's ever said, this show brought to you by, she doesn't do that. She just says, hey, I'm checking out, hey, I checked out this website here. It's great if you want this and this. So it. She, I think, unlike a lot of other people that do this, she does this in such a way that she actually has checked out these websites. And, she, you know, she actually has found something to like about it. A lot of these other content creators, it's, it's just... It's just a name drop. You know, like, they've never actually gone on the website. Or they... You know, they've never actually made use of the website that they have to... You know, they never mentioned the... Or you, you kind of get the idea. I'm, I'm kind of jumbling. I'm kind of jumbling and fumbling my words right now. But anyway, um, so when I was checking her out, initially it was just uh, the vlog and tabletop, which tabletop's actually another good uh, program. Although 90% of the games I've never even heard of. So, but but yeah. Anyway, um, when I went on a. Uh, so when I went on the uh, went on the channel, and that, 
at the time, the the intros here, it totally went right by me. Like, yeah, whatever. They were all, they all lasted like 15, 20 seconds, so I didn't really pay attention to them. But, yeah, uh, Tabletop, and then Dark Horse, and, and Sword and Laser, more Dark Horse, and then Flog, and then, but yeah, so far, it's like, it's like three, pro, three or four programs. You know, more Tabletop, Dark Horse, Flog. Gamer Girl, Country Boy. Right Like the Wind, uh, George R. Martin. But yeah, she's, she's kind of branching out though. I mean, then we got written by a kid. They're starting up. So now we got written by a kid as well as her other three or four programs. But man, this is, I figured it was just some geek goddess content creator, Vaginal Fantasy. Apparently there were uh, there were seven episodes before here, before this. So, but like I said, AG, I think she's more than just some geek gamer goddess. Like, like I like I said, she's a damn, she's a freaking entrepreneur. It's an enterprising chick here. You know, and then there's more written by a kid. And bear in mind, too, this came out like freaking 10 years ago. So she's really laying the groundwork for a lot of other people. In Vaginal Fantasy again. Now I got Super Note. I don't know what that is. Uh, Dr. Horrible Sing Along Block. That was, again, um, again, about 10 years ago when I was, when I was, uh, when I'd hang around these, uh, these hardcore nerds like every month. Um, they would have this show run in Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. Pandemic. Didn't know there was a board game of it. I knew it was on a video game. You just, you create your own virus or bacteria or whatever, and you have to, like, wipe out the entire planet. Never knew there was a board game, though. Here, let's scroll back up here a little bit. Okay, he's just talking. But, yeah, it's... Uh, don't forget to sing. Okay, now it's like nine years ago. Now we got space janitors. So we got about five or six things going on here. Like I said, I, I never knew she was an entrepreneur. Like I said, I thought it was just, I thought she was just some, like a content creator or something. Or, uh, let me, let me try to say this right. I, I always thought she was just, just a mere content creator. I didn't know she was like. She, I think she's pretty much running her own company. Like she's the actual, C, she's an actual CEO of Geek and Sundry. I never knew it was a. Now we got Learning Town. Learning Town, Space Janitors, Tabletop, Blog. Ain't got enough. Supernatural Hangout. And nine years ago. But yeah, I gotta... I gotta go back up and check something real quick. Okay, everything's still going. Well, let's see what else we got going. Now we got Arcade Arms. Holy sh... But yeah, this is, um... But this is what I was trying... I was actually trying to find the, uh... Very, very first episode of Critical Role, but... I stumbled onto this instead. It's like, god damn. Yeah, then we got Felicia's art. Apparently it's been going on a while. Okay, I, I think I watched an episode or two of this, Co-Optitude. It used to, I forgot the name of it, but uh... But yeah, the, But this, start, this started way back, 
when she first started this channel. I guess they uh, changed they were, they changed it to co-optitude. Two thousand thirteen, and now we got Magic the Gathering in here, and then Blankenstein, whatever that is. Now we got Magic the Ga yeah, we got Magic the Gathering spell singers or spell slingers, but like yeah, she's she's constantly inventing new shit. Eight years, so we're, we're we're talking eight years back, and she's already she's already coming out with all this new stuff. I also never knew there were so many board games either. Holy balls! Now we got Janitor's Live, Talking Comics Weekly. So yeah, it, it's like a full blown. This is like an actual full blown company, and not just. Not just some channel of hers. Now, um, now my final verdict on that, though, um, now am I gonna sit here and watch er, watch all this content? No. Um, like like I said, in case I didn't say earlier, this is, I'm mostly just being an archaeologist here, just digging up the past. So I just I just I. You know, so I definitely get the, uh, I definitely get the attraction. You know, this is practically geek slash nerd heaven right here. I mean, I, I mean, I'd probably, I'd probably check out Geek and Sundry a little bit here and there. But yeah, I wouldn't be going balls deep like a, like a couple of my coworkers. I'm gonna take another drink. You know, a few episodes of table, tabletop or something. Holy shit, 37 minutes into this video. <laughs> well, I did I did say this is probably gonna be a long one. Um This is uh this this video here is basically a conglomeration of uh the past several days, especially yesterday, since I didn't do a cast video yesterday. So But otherwise I think I've said everything I wanted to say on that. And then last thing, because I wasn't expecting to go go this long, and not even being done with this uh, cast video, I'm gonna try to cut this short. Um, this is another article that came out um, sometime during my work week, either Thursday or Friday. I saw this and that raised some alarm bells because the Ebola virus is one of the most lethal out there. I can't remember the exact numbers, but uh, if you get it and if it doesn't get treated immediately, you're as good as dead. It's almost like rabies. I think with rabies, once you start getting symptoms, it's all over. And I got to do something real quick. Okay, it's still going. And then once again, um, I don't have my headphones on. I'm tired of I'm tired of having a fidget with the wire to get the music in, into both ears and not just one of them. So, but um, yeah, I, this one here again it raised some alarm bells. So I figured I better give this one a look. Now I I'm gonna try not to spend a whole lot of time on this, especially after spending about 37 minutes and all the other stuff. The United States among the richest, most advanced nations. Yup. Because when it comes to a pandemic, um, we like to wait until the last minute. I mean, it it pretty much has to be uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Bring out your dead situation in order for us to do something. But yeah, 
and 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 in case of for any um how can I put this for any doubters out there or think that uh Jessica Wildfire is just being paranoid I mean, she's she's calling her she's calling her sources from stuff like the New York Times and like actual you know legit newspapers and stuff like that she's not these aren't ass polls. She actually is showing proof. It's all comforting with something like that. As an outbreak as an outbreak of Ebola's. Some are hang on. Yeah, why is what is Ebola and why is Uganda's outbreak so serious? I think you guys can see this. Yep. It's a deadly virus. Now, as far as I know, um, the Ebola virus is kind of like uh, rabies. Once you start getting symptoms, it's too late. Yup. Oh, and this is the... Um, this is the uh, Sudan strain. So, and there is no, um, there's no vaccine for it. So yeah, with a mortality rate, somewhere between 40 and 100%. So if I'm understanding this correctly, unlike the, uh, unlike the coronavirus, even, uh, even wearing a mask ain't gonna help you. Unless it's gonna be, unless it's gonna be like that scene in Naked Gun, and uh, if you two, if you, a guy and a girl want to go at it, they gotta wear, they gotta wear like body condoms. And even then, it may not be a hundred percent. The one that's spreading, yeah. Rattle doctors. Longer incubation period. Spread through saliva. <laughs> yup. A lot of Americans don't even wipe down the treadmill when they're done. Yeah. The whole point of the CDC and pandemic simulations is to keep something like that from happening. Yeah, it's all about prevention. Definitely checking that out. Ebola in America, a timeline of the deadly virus. Even treatment at one of the best facilities doesn't guarantee being cured. Yup. We are making a solid effort to combat diseases around the world since the pandemic. It feels like nobody cares. We've given up. Uh, gotten too comfortable, I think. Oh, and uh, my idle game is still running in the background. Let me uh, do a quick check on it. Yeah, my backpack is full, so let me... Let me scrap it. Okay. Um, I'm on my talent tree right now, so let me... Okay. Let me check other stuff real quick. Okay, looks like... We learned nothing from the pandemic. That don't surprise me. Talking about the better repair next. Yup. It's just seen as an inconvenience to our routine. We're supposed to get more comfortable with mitigation efforts like mass testing and ventilation. We're all supposed to stop this missing. Yep. I think I said that earlier. It pretty much has to be the Black Plague before we actually do anything. I'm gonna take another drink. Okay, now to be fair, to be fair, I don't wear it either. But 
I muscle out. One, I act, I'm trying to, I'm already trying to keep my distance away from people anyway. I don't, I don't believe in violating another person's personal space. Um, you know, I'll say, excuse me, or if I need to get to somewhere, I'll just stand way behind somebody until they're done doing whatever it is they're doing, getting out of there, and then going in there. I don't, normally I don't just run up, excuse me, and then butt in front of them and you know, do it like that. I don't, so, and plus, I'm not out during peak hours. Usually, uh, usually, the early, the, um, the earliest I'm out and about is probably uh, 6 p.m. at a time when everybody's like going home and having dinner and all that. Ed Young was written. All right, let's check him out. The pandemic's legacy is already clear. All this will happen again. Oh, yeah, I think I remember talking about this. Yeah, um, I did a cast video on This is on one of my cast videos. It's a lion sack of shit. The pandemic is over. Um, no, when... When 20... When, um... Uh, when 2,700 people die from COVID in one week... No, the pandemic is not over. Yeah, that's, um... That was another Jessica Wildfire article. That's exactly what she was saying, too. I mean, if people are still dying from COVID, no, the pandemic is not over. Bluster any of you, America's born in Yeah. There's no warning us that we'll see another pandemic a lot sooner than anyone. Yep. Climate change exasperates everything. Monkeypox was a familiar foe and test vaccine and already at hand. Did both threats sputter and stumble at every step? Uh huh? Huh? So we're we're kind of becoming a global petri dish here then. Now it's endemic in the US. I gotta see this. Yup. But again, um, like I said a few minutes ago, I don't wear a mask, but, and if it does get to a point where, at least uh, where I live, or at least here in Minnesota, um, if they, if they declare a statewide emergency or something like that, where uh, all of us are required to wear masks, I have no problems with it. I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. Um, actually for a while there too, at my job, Walmart, we were required to wear masks, but um, which I which I did most of the time, except when I was uh when I was when I was inside of our inside of our grocery freezer or inside of our dairy cooler. I'd have it down I'd have it down then, but I also need to be able to breathe as well. And plus, uh, I wear glasses, so having a mask on causes my glasses to fog up. I need to be able to see when I'm inside the cooler or freezer. So yeah, I'd have a mask down in those situations, but otherwise, for the most part, it was on. It simmers, it festers, it becomes a... Yup. Live in a melting bubble. Yup. Bingo. I'll bet third world come... Third world countries take this shit seriously. You know, they don't exactly have the greatest medical care in those places, so yeah. In fact, uh, now that I just thought of this too, it was probably one of the reasons why way back in ancient times, people had uh, people had concubines. They had to knock up as many women as possible. They had to, again, the medical care back then wasn't what it, what it is today. So in order to in order to beat disease, you had to outbreed it. You had to you had to breed more children than the diseases were killing off. So it it became a well, how can I put this? 
it sort of kind of became a war of attrition, for lack of a better phrase. But in countries like ours, again, with uh, such good medical care, we're so advanced, you know, it's just, it's something you don't think about. You know, here it's, oh well, if I get hit with the Ebola virus, I'll just go see a doctor. They ain't got that option anywhere else. So, having to get shots and whine about mass fatigue. Huh? They vote for politicians who undermine vaccine programs. Yeah, so they can get back to their daily routine life. They condone and nurture any intellectualism. They scoff at vegetables and then spend all their money on miracle cures. All right, let's see what this is. I got a feeling this could be a video that's going to take almost an hour. U.S. continues to drop, driven by COVID-19. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show this earlier. For those, I hope you guys can see this, but for those that are wondering what this is, this is like a, this is a cemetery for COVID victims. What's your, this video, or video, this picture here, this is, these are all the people that have died from COVID. I've never seen this before. So, yeah, some pretty serious shit here. I, although it should be, no, this is at the Washington Monument. Washington, D.C. These are all the people who died from COVID. So. So, yeah, no, President. So, yeah, no, President Biden, the pandemic is not over. And I'm pretty sure the uh, powers that be are probably trying to secure more uh, more land space for all the other people that are going to die from COVID and possibly monkeypox and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Title, there you go. <laughs> Hundred slices of avocado toast. <laughs> he is, huh? I mean, I've never, I've never seen this guy before, or I've never seen any of his programs, but I have, I've heard the name being tossed around a lot, Doctor Oz, like a celebrity doctor or something like that, the biggest quack in the business. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that, that's bad. Polling at fifty percent. Fetterman's lead over Oz shrinks in Pennsylvania State Senate race poll. Okay. Okay, so we treat Africa with horrible indifference. Less than eight billion in aid to all sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, and I'm probably gonna be cutting it off here pretty soon too. Oh, that's a PDF. Never mind. Yeah, I don't want to dig through that. Okay, so it looks like um, at this point, I'm only about halfway into the article. So it looks like this one here is a long one. So, so then I'll just go ahead and cut it off here. As um, I've gone about 53 minutes into this. So, yeah, I'll just go ahead and call it good here, because like I said, um, this one here is almost an hour long. I was not expecting to go this long, so, yeah. Um, but, but otherwise, hey, uh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, but sorry to sound like a broken record, but once again, I didn't do a cast video yesterday. So, a part of this, a part of today's cast video was was meant for yesterday, so... I'm having to put two videos in one. So. But once again, thanks for tuning in and listening to me. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. Hopefully within a more reasonable time frame. So, yeah. But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.